Hello, Jim. You hear me okay? I can hear you okay now. How are you? Excellent. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. All right. I'm working on one screen today, so okay. I just have to look at something really quick. Are you in your office? Yeah. I'm in my office. Good. Yeah. What's that? Looking good. Thank you. Uh... Okay. <sighs> what are we talking about today? I forget. Global uh, warming or strategy. Yeah, global warming today, and that is the grab and go growth topic. It's tactics on global warming. Well, before we start, I want to know: Do you uh, do you intend to? Break the filibuster and pack the court if you should be elected. And will you well, denounce Tim Barry right now, yes or no? Well, I have denounced Tim Barry since I was 13. So let, let, let's talk about uh, let's <laughs> talk about the uh, um, yeah the, anything except for that. And I'm definitely not going to answer that question. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. What a what a train wreck. Rip Remember, we are being recorded right oh, now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, uh, it was pretty awful, I thought. It was, it was horrific. It was hard, hard it to watch. It was a watch. train wreck. It was a little hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think they just, uh, I think we uh, bring Samuel L. Jackson in as the moderator, and, uh, and I'll ask the questions. Well, somebody said uh, in Facebook, they said, can we replace Chris Wallace with a, uh, Woman with small children that have been home since March. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. That's perfect. I think you should be the moderator, Tim and Jim, and I should just like go at it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be okay. fun. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. I'd have to pull my eyes up like this, though. <laughs> there you go. Okay, here we go. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Too <laughs> funny. Too much fun. Too funny. All right. Well, good. We got some people joining. Welcome uh, to those who have been here before. And uh, if you're new to this, welcome. Get started in a moment or two. Zig Ziglar used to say, he'd say, he'd ask the audience, he'd say, how many of you <clears throat> have seen me before or else this is your first time? Please raise your hand. <laughs> So in chat, if you've seen us before, or this is your first time, please just uh, Ra say Click aye. raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Say there you go. <laughs> Somebody raise their hand, of course. Uh -huh. Clarissa, that's awesome. Of course they are. That is awesome. All right, we'll give it, uh, we'll give it a moment or two. Um, and we'll get started here. Uh, John, I love, your sound sound effects. By that. Yeah. I love your sound effects. That's fantastic. Oh, I've got a bunch of new ones. I won't share them now, but they're good. <clears throat> Welcome everybody who's joined us in the past moment or two. We'll get started at 1231. Mm -hmm. Give everybody a moment to be able to log in, sign in, etc. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen here so we can prep to get started. Uh. 
Thank goodness for you guys. I'm in the middle. That's all I can say. <laughs> God, what a train. A rose surrounded by two thorns, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Exactly. Whoops. I'm navigating on one screen today, so. Oh, boy. I know. Normally, I have the luxury of two, but not today. But that's all right. Edge. I will. I'm living on the edge. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jim Wilcox. Uh, I am the owner of Sandler Performance Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and in South Bend, Indiana. And welcome to our Wednesday Grab and Go Growth Tactics session. I am joined by uh, my two esteemed colleagues, who I will let introduce <clears throat> themselves. Tim, Tim Barry, why don't you go first this time? All right. Thank you. Are and where you're at. Uh, Tim Berry, I own the Sandler Performance Center in Fort Worth, Texas, in the Republic of Texas. Happy to be here as always, and without further ado, I will introduce the wildly handsome John Vanderslice. Well, thank you for that, Tim. I appreciate you stating the obvious. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, hi, I'm John Vanderslice, and I own the Sandler Performance Center here in beautiful Garden State of New Jersey. So thank you and welcome everybody that's joined us. Uh, Michael Norton, sorry. Michael Norton's here and I'm glad you like my background, Michael Norton. All right, tomorrow begins Q4. And so we're gonna talk about uh, success strategies, growth strategies to get us through Q4 and beyond. And I'll say this at the end of the present, at the end of this you know, presentation, but everything we do today to the end of the year is going to matter when it comes to our not only Q4, but it's going to matter as we go into 2021. And I cannot stress this enough. We've talked about this since COVID came around and we started this webinar series. Uh, we've touched on this in July when we talked about Q3 strategies. Um, I am curious if you were here for that webinar back at the, the, the very beginning of July when we talked about Q3 growth strategies, and you implemented anything that we talked about in that session, throw that in chat right now and tell us what you did and what the success was. I'm curious um, what you guys have done to find success in Q3, but let's just start there really quick. We're, we're obviously going to be talking about our care strategy, how we go about that and what that means, but Tim and John, Anything that you guys have done specifically through Q3 that is that you guys have found success with in your businesses? And I'm gonna open with that question for you guys. Good. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think it's a good question. And, you know, Q3 was interesting because <clears throat> we had a, about a month or maybe a month and a half of COVID kind of change the way we do business and the way we, we sell. And uh, and honestly, uh, what I did was I doubled down on the prospecting side of things. So I just shifted my, my cookbook and changed it from face-to-face -face meetings, which became obsolete uh, in Q3, really. And mm -hmm. then just, uh, I, but I did double down on the cold calling activity and doing things via Zoom and whatnot. So I, I found that... It, you know, my behaviors, uh, I just became more resolute and disciplined in my actual behaviors. And I just had to change the medium by which I did it. It went face to face to Zoom. So that, that's, that was the, that's what made for a incredibly successful Q3. Excellent. Excellent. John, how about you? Yeah, I would agree with Tim. I think it was a matter of, uh, we, we talked to our clients about this. It was a matter of really doubling down or tripling down on behavior. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate. A lot of my business comes from referrals and introductions. I do a lot of networking. And obviously that face-to-face -face networking wasn't available. Uh, but the interesting thing was, uh, and, and I don't mind cold calling. I really don't. And, um, but typically for me in, in normal times, it's a little bit of a low yield activity. But what I, interestingly, what I found in a lot of our clients found out that there were a lot more people available on the telephone answering the phone, right? They were home, yeah. they were available, and they're actually more interested in a conversation. So I think the key for us was really doubling down on the behaviors, uh, really pivoting to a new, uh, a new uh, lane 
in the business development. So it was very good. Yeah. Excellent. And I'll say for myself, you know, we had uh, a lot of delivery through Q3 and I had to reprioritize because it's really easy to get caught up in execution, especially when delivery or execution uh, is part of your role. And it's a great excuse uh, for being busy. So for me in my business, it's a reprioritization of those behaviors that Tim spoke of and putting those first. I know the delivery has to happen and the execution on that delivery has to happen. But if I don't do the behaviors, I don't set myself up for a good Q4 and beyond. So um, in chat, uh, this is a question that I want you guys to respond to in chat. As you think about your business, this could be from a sales perspective, an operational perspective, but I want it to be things that you can control. What is the one thing that must happen in your business related to sales or revenue we can add operations in there. What's the one thing that must happen, whether you're a business owner on this call, a manager on this call, a sales professional on this call, what's the one thing that must happen in Q4? Go ahead and type that in the chat now. Uh, John, uh, you put consistent behavior. That's the one thing that must happen for you. Yeah, yep. I think, you know, for me, it's, uh, Sometimes I think we add complexity where we don't need to. And I think for me, it's repeating the fundamentals consistently. Yeah. Denise Mills put in there, the first thing that must happen is dials. We cannot control response, but we can control our actions. And that is 100% spot on. Tim, you're shaking your head. I can tell you want to comment on that. Yeah, that one, <clears throat> that, that's, the, that's the, the, the difference between your top performers who have that mindset of, abundance versus the variable or low performers who don't and and, and just you know controlling the uh the, you know our actions the the top 10 behaviors of mm -hmm. uh, you know the sales actions is the is without question it's the most important thing yeah i spoke with a prospective client this week who said jim we don't have a revenue problem uh, we have a behavior problem so we're really busy right now. We have plenty of work, but as I look forward, we're not doing the right behaviors to generate revenue through Q4 into Q1 of 2021, and that scares me. Um, and so that to me is a very real thing. Uh, Leo just typed in staying diligent and focused on the day-to-day. -day. Michael Norton, leave Q4 with closing what's in the qualified funnel, make sure we're positioned for Q1 to hit the new year running. That is excellent. Thank you. Continue to put your responses in. What's the one thing that must happen in Q4 related to your business, um, in your business related to sales, revenue operations, et cetera? Would like to continue to get feedback from you on that. So one of the things that we train every single client on is our care strategy. And it's important enough to bring this up a second time uh, this year in this webinar series. Uh, care is our strategy for client segmentation. It helps us with a couple of things that we're going to refer to uh, throughout this uh, next few minutes together. But this is how we prioritize our books of business, the territories that we own and run, et cetera. And it's a look at how we treat clients from a keep, an attain, a recapture, and an expand perspective. So there's three steps to care. Um, the first step in care is to define the attributes. The second step is to identify the behaviors. The third step is to identify the individuals or the organizations that we commit to uh, tackling or getting in front of, et cetera, in the next 90-day period. Too often, companies will look at their strategy from a beginning of the year perspective and it ends up being the health club approach. Tim, you know, the health club approach, right? From the beginning of the year. Oh yeah, absolutely. You go crazy in the, the beginning, you go crazy in the beginning for the first uh, 30 days and, and you take your foot off the gas and then by, by uh, tax day, uh, everybody quits. Exactly. And so John, can you walk us through the attributes exercise of care. This is step one 
why do we start here and, and what are we looking for here? You know, I think it's, <clears throat> again, I think it, if you go back and think about, <clears throat> you, know, com, you know, repeating fundamentals consistently, I think it's got to start, you know, Stephen Covey, a great thing in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you begin with the end in mind. You know, what yeah. is it we're trying to accomplish? And, and I think a lot of times we don't get granular enough in our thinking. And I think the care model forces us to get granular to say, for example, you know, uh, under, under keep, right? Who are those clients that we really want to keep? Uh, they're, you know, and we all know it, it's more expensive to get a new account than keep an account. But who are the accounts when we look at it that if I woke up tomorrow morning and found out that I lost an account, you know, what do those attributes look like, right? There's not a whole lot of investment there where, you know, we manage the cost, they've got um, growth potential. Um, so I think you go through and you apply these attributes and I think they can change a little bit depending on your business. Um, and also I think under, under keep, for example, um, who are the people sometimes that we don't wanna keep? I know one of my clients at the end of the year, you know, takes a look and sometimes we acquire clients that are not good for our business uh, and, and we shed those. So. I think taking this granular approach, Jim, um, it just makes a lot of sense rather than saying, hey, we want to grow the business X percent next year. Yeah, I think it's critically important that we do get granular with these attributes in each one of these quadrants. And I'll give you an example. I had a, a conversation with a client a couple of weeks ago. We were looking through the attain behaviors. And, and if nothing else, screenshot this. Uh, reach out to any one of us. We're happy to send this to you. If you copy and paste these, it's, it's a great starting point, but we've got to get granular because all of us operate in a little bit of a different world. All of us look at our clients slightly different. And for my client that I had a conversation with, you know, it says low vulnerability here in the attain bucket. Well, they are in a commodity business. And so everything that they do and touch is high vulnerability for them. And he said, Jim, can I change that to high vulnerability? Cause I disagree with that. And I said, absolutely. It's gotta be specific to your world and it's gotta be specific to your culture, what you're looking for. One of the things uh, that this does is it helps us identify our ideal client profile. Right. And, and Tim, I'll ask you why, why do we want to get to that point? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a good question. It's, you know, you, you've got to have your ideal client profile so you, you can build your, your uh, hunting activities, your prospecting activities around going after the, the right kinds of clients. Uh, you know, I'll give you an example. I've got a client who, uh, you know, has gone through this exercise to build that ideal client profile. And one of the things that they state is, is they're not looking for uh, companies that, you know, targets that will pay slow, uh, 180 day terms and stuff like that. And so I, again, you've got to know what you're, you're, you're hunting for. And, and, and again, yeah. whether you're, you're account managing or whether you're, you're, you're an actual sales hunter, you, you, you've got to have that profile specific enough. So you know who the heck to go hunt in the first place. Exactly. And I think that, you know, once you go through this exercise, it becomes abundantly clear exactly what we're looking for. It doesn't mean we don't take others on, but it really solidifies our ideal client profile. I, will, I use the example of a dartboard all the time. We look at the red center of a dartboard. That's the ultimate target. That's where the ultimate points are. It's the hardest to hit, but I'm certainly going to take the points in the concentric circles that go out beyond that. And I can make decisions when I'm looking for business. I can make decisions at that point as to, as to how hard I want to pursue relative to how close they are to that dead center bullseye for me. So first step in this care process is to get very, very granular with the attributes of each one of these quadrants. Who do I want to keep? Who do I want to attain? Who do I want to recapture? and who do I want to expand? Yeah. Second step is identifying the behaviors. And again, we want to get granular here. And so behaviors for me for uh, keep might be different, not only within my organization, but they may be different 
from client to client. And I'll give you an example. I'm playing golf this Friday with a longtime client of mine. And this round of golf is part of our each other's keep strategy. In the spring, I play golf with him at his favorite spot. And in the fall, he plays golf with me at my favorite spot. It is 100% part of our keep strategy. Now, I don't do that with everybody. Uh, I would like to, but not all of my clients golf. So, <laughs> um, And so uh, I have some very granular things that I do with clients as part of that keep strategy. What have you guys seen, John or Tim? What have you guys seen in terms of uh, keep strategies that are maybe unique or client-specific as they go out and exercise on their or execute on their uh, care strategies. Yeah, I think it's things like what you say, Jim. I mean, I, I have clients, I'm a golfer as well. And a lot of my clients are golfers. And I think sometimes, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, incorporating some fun with a business meeting. So I have clients that will have, uh, you know, an annual golf trip. We have clients that uh, even our own clients in organizational excellence and mastery, we actually had a, uh, a social director that he puts, uh, they, they want to get together as uh, in a networking setting and have some fun. We have an annual fishing trip uh, every year in the fall. Um, I've seen people have the Caesar meetings. You know, they have meetings, uh, uh, quarterly meetings, business check-ins, um, you know, but I think, you know, you have to work out um, not only the strategy, right, but what are the tactics specifically that you're, that it's going to be. And, Again, I think we don't need to add complication. It's simply keeping in touch, uh, showing that we care, uh, C-A-R-E, and making sure that we understand the business and nothing has changed. And however we decide to do that um, is, uh, you know, is up to us, but it's something that has to be done. Those touches have to be made, you know? Yeah, and I can't, I can't stress this one enough. When you think about our responsibilities, as sales professionals, we basically have two at the highest level. The first responsibility is to keep the clients that we have that generate our revenue, right? So our, our top uh, 5%, 10%, 20% of clients that generate the bulk of our revenue, those are the important ones that we wanna hang on to. We don't want the competition snooping around. We don't wanna lose them for reasons that are preventable. The second responsibility that we have is to disrupt other people's relationships, right? Now, certainly there are net new prospects out there that have never done business in our particular field, you know, but by and large, our job is to go out and disrupt other relationships to be able to get new business. And so when you look at, that, at it from that perspective, it's very important to get very specific with those keep clients and often it's unique to the client themselves. So, you know, I've seen some things where, you know, there's maybe a, a biannual dinner or there's, there's some sort of um, gift that is exchanged where that's appropriate, when that's appropriate. I've got a, um, uh, I know of a company where they make bourbon and so their top 5% of their clients get a bottle of their best bourbon. You know, unfortunately, I'm not a client, but I'm working on that. So, <laughs> just kidding. But we want to get specific so that we know what we're doing in order to keep clients. Michael Norton wrote in there, having a quarterly value review instead of a quarterly <laughs> business review is key. And I agree 100%, Michael. Thank you for putting that in, ch in, in chat. It's one of the questions in the keep strategy is, what value am I bringing to this relationship for you? That's different than saying to Michael, for example, hey, Michael, how's it going? What do you need, right? It's, Michael, what value am I bringing? Because if I'm not bringing value, then we've got to identify what I should be bringing or you should fire me, right? So if I'm not bringing value, you shouldn't pay me. That's a very vulnerable, but very, very powerful conversation to have. Yeah, and I think that's a great point because I've seen that go wrong where um, there's a company um, that does something called strategic customer management um, mm -hmm. or forensic customer management, excuse me. And they talk about these value claim presentations to be done at, at these quarterly value reviews. The, the trouble with it was the value was their perceived value, 
that they were providing. They were saying, yeah. here's the value we brought you, here's the value we brought you. It has to be looked at from the other side. What value do you perceive yep. to bring? And kind of how do I get fired? Right? Yeah. Uh, great question. And I think, you know, we have to start with strategy, right? The overview of what it is we're trying to accomplish. And then the tactics come next. I think sometimes we run down the track with a tactic and we've not thought through the strategy and that can go wrong. I'll put a kind of a cool quote here in the, uh, in the chat box that I, I like quite a bit of, of, about that, um, which says strategy without tactics is the slowest road to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So I think, I think that's excellent. Exercise. I think that's excellent. One thing I'll add to that, John, is we, we have incredible tools within Sandler and Michael Norton actually referenced one of our tools, the QVR tool. There's also a tool there to help identify the value that you bring from the client's perspective. So if you want more information on that, whether you're a client on this call or you're new to Sandler, new to us, reach out to us and we're happy to have a discussion on those tools with you. Now, as we look over to the attain portion of our behaviors, this starts to identify uh, what our cookbook for success looks like. Certainly there are, there are key behaviors that we do on a biannual, annual basis with clients, but the attain segment, that's our daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly hunting of new opportunities out there. For those of us that are responsible for that, those behaviors should be incredibly granular. We have ours defined, we have ours agreed upon, and, and we have accountability around those behaviors we understand what we have to do in order to go out and attain new business. And it's things like picking up the phone and prospecting, doing free talks, right? Running sales meetings for prospective companies. Tim, what type of attain activities are you doing in addition to that? Yeah, I think, uh, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the other things are, you know, leveraging uh, LinkedIn connections, uh, building your mm -hmm. correct lists, target lists and, you know, sending them emails, uh, blogging and providing and building content uh, is important. Uh, you know, networking, even in yep. COVID, you can still network, it's just virtually. And we've done some of that, doing public speaking to get some messaging and, and to, to provide free content for, for others to attract conversations. So those are some other things uh, that, that you, you have to have built into your, your daily routine. And let's not forget the referral conversation in there as well. That's a hugely important one. Michael Norton just, asked, just mentioned that. Recapture and expand, those are highly um, likely that they're referral type conversations internally or externally in there. But there are some other types of behaviors that companies do very specifically around both of those type of activities. And so again, it's important to get granular. Now the third step in having a successful care strategy is to identify the companies. And this is where things get interesting. For, for me and my company, we're five people in the company, three people that produce, two office staff, our care strategies are handwritten. And so we certainly have a CRM that helps us with the data uh, that's in there, but we handwrite it out. We have a number of meetings that we're gonna have from a keep perspective. Those are plotted out, expected to be on a calendar. From an attain perspective, that's our daily cookbook. We have those companies listed and what our strategies are to attain within those companies and then we have our lists of recapture and expand. We have other companies, and I'll ask John and Tim to comment on this in a second. We have other companies that have very sophisticated data intelligence within their corporations. I have a couple companies where they have tagged in their CRM, K-A-R-E, for every client so they can quickly run reports on this and it's very automated. What are you guys seeing with your clients? around listing out the companies from this regard. Yeah, I think I, I don't have any of those clients that have that a level of sophistication, but I do have, uh, actually it's an exercise we do several times a year, but it is handwritten out or it's kept in the CRM, um, mm -hmm. not to the level that you just described, but I do think 
you know, it, it's again, I think that the great word is granular. You, you've got to, yeah. you've got to start at the top and work this down. And then once you do this and you get that ideal uh, client profile and you apply these attributes, it makes it very much easier to then apply the names. Um, and it's a an necessary exercise. And I like the idea that you actually write it out because it just reinforces when you write it. But that's what we see most commonly with our, our clients. We have them go through the exercise, we have them write them out, uh, and then everybody shares them. Um, and it's, yep. it's, it's just a great reminder. And I would agree with that too, John. We see the most that are written out, but there are some very sophisticated companies out there that have chosen to put this type of stuff within their CRM systems. And so it, it, either way, the risk here is if you only do it one time and you don't look at it in the next quarter or the subsequent quarters after that. To do a care strategy and never go back to it is a waste of time and energy. This is intended to be a living, breathing document. So when I come to my team, for example, and I have names that have carried over from quarter three to quarter four, I had better be ready, willing, and able to defend, justify, and explain my rationale for that because I should be checking those names off. And if I'm still pursuing them, that's okay. I just want to be able to defend it to my team to whom I'm accountable to. So any other comments on this before we move on over the next minute or two that we have left here? I think that uh, it goes without saying that 90 days comes pretty quickly. I feel like we just had this discussion, but that was back at the first week of July. 90 days has arrived pretty quickly. We've got to measure frequently, right, what we're doing here. So regardless of, of how we go about doing it, it's critical to measure our activity, the type of results we're getting. We've got to be ready and able to tweak on the fly. Execution is key. This is an example of one of our Sandler tools that allows us to put um, our care strategy within the tool and we can define the type of activities that are around there and then we can track those behaviors however we go about it. Um, again, I have companies that have it handwritten. They keep it in an Excel spreadsheet or it's fully automated within their sophisticated CRM system. Um, at the end of the day, we can't spend a lot of time figuring out how to get started. We've just got to get started. Gentlemen, any comments on that? Yeah, no, Jim, I think, right. I think you have to do whatever works for you. I, I think I've seen a couple of people, a couple of clients of mine get a little stuck trying to do this exactly right. And if it means you've got to get a piece of paper and write it down, do that, right? A partially you know, executed plan. Uh, today's better yeah. than a, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we don't execute it all tomorrow. So, um, you know, don't get stuck on it. I think what, if, you, if you like to work in Excel, do it in Excel. If you like to write it down, yep. write it down. If you want to put it in your CRM, put it in your CRM. But you just have to do it. And you pick and, and start small. Pick one element if you want. Pick one one uh, of the four, you know, yeah. like the band, for example, and go with it. Exactly. I have a client who recapture is the biggest part of their strategy. It's balanced, right? But they've got a lot of recapture opportunities in Q4 and that's what they're focusing on. So this is just a screenshot of uh, some very public companies that I put in here. The idea is to be very granular, right? So write it out with detail, put it in your CRM with detail, et cetera. Going back to um, uh, plan, do measure, adjust. We want to adjust as necessary, we want to adjust frequent, frequently. And then I'll go back to what we led with. Every single thing that we do in Q4 is going to have an impact, not only on that quarter, but as we go into 2021. There are things that matter. There are things that we can control. It's that intersection of those two that we've got to focus on. Care is one of them. Uh, Tim, John, any parting words? We're at our time. As always, yeah, I appreciate think, uh, you guys just, being just, here with me. Just the encouragement uh, for everybody on the call is this is, you know, it's been a tough year for a lot of people and uh, now is not the time to take your foot off the, the gas or play victim. It's, it's time to double down on the big behaviors, 
close strong and remember that your competition is probably sitting around feeling sorry for themselves right now and this is not the time to feel sorry for yourselves so let's let's close the year strong by doing uh by doing the, the right behaviors absolutely all right appreciate everybody being here if you've got questions about fear strategy sales sales leadership organizational excellence reach out to us our contact information is here i'm in indiana tim's in texas John somewhere in the United States. I think it's called New Jersey. Yes, New Jersey. Uh, that's where John is, the Garden State. Southern New Jersey, not Northern New Jersey. So appreciate everybody's time today. Have a great week selling. We'll see you next week on the next Grab and Go Growth Tactics webinar. Thanks, Gentlemen, team. have a great day. Appreciate everybody being here. We'll talk soon. Ciao.